So hello, I have the honor and privilege to be sitting down today with Dr. Gabriela Cabos from Brigham Women's Hospital, um, talking about connective tissue disease. So it's a difficult condition. Um, tell me, can you walk me through um, the laboratory um, measures that you take and, and, and when we should be ordering laboratory measures for these patients? Sure, I mean, I actually love this question uh, because I think patients are very well aware of the vast majority of what an AMA is, right? And when we say ANA for the general population, the first thing that they think about is lupus. And so if someone is given a positive ANA, they think I have lupus. And so I think that is one um, a piece of education that we need to kind of get out there into the public and also to our other uh, physicians and practitioners, right? A positive ANA by itself does not give you a diagnosis of anything. You need additional clinical and physical exam findings to point you into the right direction. And so with that said, when should we check one, right? And I think for me, I get, you know, the cases of I have a positive ANA and I have lupus and I say, but let's step back and go back in time and see what else is going on. And so for things like, let's say fatigue, it is one of the most common symptoms that lupus patients will report. And this is based on um, various studies, but it's not even in the classification criteria, because if you think about the world <laughs> in general, we're- We're all tired. <laughs> we're all tired. Right. And so fatigue <laughs> is pretty, it's not specific, right? And so if you have someone that's just complaining about fatigue, should you check an AMA? If there's nothing else ongoing or there's nothing else in the laboratory, like anemias or something that's pointing in that direction, I would say no. The other case that we see this commonly is hair loss, right? And so even uh, more GPs will say, oh, the hair loss, it's a reflex test to check this ANA. And in my mind, absolutely not. If you see something on their actual skin exam, on their scalp exam that concerns for discoid lupus, yes, you should check it. But if someone just comes in and says, I have like a little bit more shedding, but reviews of systems is completely normal and negative, then I would ask all of you, do not check an ANA unless that there is something that's driving more of a, a suspicion for a connective tissue disease. Well, excellent. So then once you do get that positive ANA yeah. with no other symptoms, what's the next step? And so I think it's all putting into context, right? The ANA test itself, it's a very sensitive test, right? And the way it's sensitive is that there's going to be about 30% of patients will have a false positive. And so that means if we test normal, healthy populations, 30% of patients that are healthy will have a positive ANA at a titer of 1 to 40. And so what this tells you is that a positive ANA, again, does not give you a diagnosis, but the higher that titer gets, right? So even a titer of 1 to 360, meaning how many times did we dilute this and this test is still positive, that false positive rate really goes down, right? And so I think it's always putting that into context. If I have a, and I have one of these patients um, that I follow, let's say they have a, she has an elevated ANA, one to 640. She has a positive double strand of DNA, but there's nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. But she's young, she's 22. And so for her, we have meetings every six months where I check her blood work, I check her urine. We make sure we go through thorough review systems that nothing new has happened. She also follows with my rheumatology colleague. And so what do I label her? a positive ANA. That's all her diagnosis. She does not fit criteria for any specific disease, but our suspicion is there that if we continue to longitudinally monitor her, she may develop something at some point. And so for these patients, definitely someone needs to be following their serologies, their urine, um, regular labs to make sure that there's nothing else that's um, developing. Well, great. Well, we appreciate your insight so much. We thank you for being here. Our patients are so lucky, and we're so lucky to have you here together with us. Well, so thank you thank so you. much, Gary. Thank you for joining bye -bye. us. Bye-bye.